scripture lesson is Mark 11, 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem near the towns of Bethpage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the villages there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you're doing that, say the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went out and found a colt out in the street tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them and the crowd let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches in the field and spread them on the road. The people who were in front of those and who followed behind began to shout, praise God. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming of the kingdom of David, our father. Praise be to God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with his 12 disciples. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we ask that you might share with us the meaning of your words, the scriptures that you've given to us. We ask that the spirit of your son would be here and alive in this place this day. Amen. I want to do a little word association test with you today. If, if I say the word basketball, what do you think of? March Madness? Okay. Final Four? And maybe the... the uh, the champion, okay. But basketball is called basketball because you put the ball in the basket, right? If I said to you, baseball, what would you think of? Phillies, I knew, I knew that was gonna be the answer. And baseball is appropriate because you have to get around the bases to get home. Okay, now if I say to you the word football, what do you think of? <laughs> Cheese, Green Bay, <laughs> or the Eagles. But now there's a logical inconsistency here. Basketball, you put the, ba the ball in the basket. Baseball, you run the bases. And football, well, you kick off, and you punt, and you kick the extra point, or maybe you kick a point. But really, it's not about using your feet. You have to run the ball and, and pass the ball. And so, if you think of football, what do you think of, Eileen? What do you think of when you think of football? Soccer. Soccer. American football is eagles and cheese, but football in the world is soccer. Okay, so, so sometimes words are misleading, and, and the information that they carry misleads us. The same thing is true of Palm Sunday. When I say palms, you think of Palm Sunday and what we celebrate today. But you know what? The palms are a minority report. Only one gospel out of the four gospels talks about waving palm branches. And that's the gospel of John. Now we have four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called the synoptic gospels because they're alike. The Gospel of John is not like the others. It's not, a, uh, it's not a gospel of history, as are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but it's a God of theology, the thinking about Jesus. And so it's kind of light to depend on Palm Sunday on the Gospel of John. So really, this should probably be called Leafy Branch Sunday. But that doesn't work very well, does it? Two of the Gospels, Talk about cutting leafy branches, Matthew and Mark. Luke doesn't talk about branches at all. So, so what's going on here? We, we, we use a part of this and, and we magnify a part of us and we lift a part of it up. But the question I have for you today is, do we think it through? Do we really understand what was going on? Is this just a pageant that we participate in or is there meaning that is underneath? 
We think of Palm Sunday as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And, and some people think of that as kind of an historical accident, just Jesus kind of stumbles into it. But the reality is, it was planned. He planned it. It was executed, his plan. He told his disciples, go into the next town and you'll find a colt there. And he gave them the secret words to say, my master needs of it. And, and, he, and they went and they did that and they got the colt, nobody interfered. And they rode into town. And in this event, in the triumphal entry into Jerusalem at the time of the Passover, the coming of the Passover, Jesus is making a statement. And the statement he's making is, I have come as the representative of God, the Messiah, the King. Very clear message to the people. He went into Jerusalem, wound up at the temple there to confront the religious authorities, to present to them his message from God. In a couple and two of the versions, it talks about what he did in the temple, cleaning out the money changers and the, the sellers of sacrifice. But when you think about that, it's a little confusing too, because these were important ingredients in the temple. The temple only received money that was their money. And people that came, came from all different parts of, of the Eastern Mediterranean, and they had different coins. And so to, to really give to the temple, you had to change your money. Now maybe they were cheating too, I don't know, but the, the reason they were there was to help the temple worship. And the sacrifices, it was important that they sold sacrifices. You could not sacrifice an animal that was not perfect. And so if you're bringing it on a day's journey or two days journey, it's not gonna be perfect when it gets there. You have to be able to buy it there. And so what Jesus was doing was not necessarily kicking out the people that were cheating. He was saying, you people are off base. This isn't what God wants. God doesn't want you to offer these sacrifices on the altar. And, and this thing of, of prayer, you, you've just changed it into business. And so Jesus was challenging the way religion was practiced at the day. Now, what if, let us suppose, what if Jesus takes his message to the temple and the leaders of the temple say, you know what, we have been mistaken. You know what, what you're telling us about what God wants is really important. Now they had the prophets telling them that. Prophets speaking for God said, I hate and despise your sacrifices. The, the stench of your offering is an abomination to me. They didn't pay attention to that. But what if they would have listened to Jesus? We had it all wrong. But they didn't do that. There are many what ifs in life. And it's important, I think, for us to understand what happened on Palm Sunday and what's happening for us today. Now, I want to share with you one of my brushes with leafy uh, branches. I was a kid, and I did a lot of things as a kid that were a little different. And my buddy and I across the street one day decided to play telephone lineman. Did you ever play telephone lineman? Okay, you probably didn't because we made up the game, okay? <laughs> And, and what we did, we found a tree, yeah, maybe 15, 20 feet high, on his property, his father's property, tied a saw to our belt, and climbed up. And at the top, we sawed the tops out. Now, the problem was, I got to the top of the first tree, and I grabbed the branch, the main branch, and I sawed it. <laughs> You got the message. I was holding on to the top. And when I sawed all the way through, the top fell down. I fell over backwards. Somehow, dropping the saw made a swipe at the stub that was sticking up there. Missed it the first time. Second time, close. And somehow, the third time, I grabbed hold of it. Now, what if I wouldn't have? I would have been like the top of the tree, 15 feet down in the ground. What would have happened? Could have broken my neck. Could have broken an arm or a leg or all of them. Or a back and been a paraplegic. What could have happened? There are many times we ask that question, what could have happened? How could have it turned? 
Well, we need to ask that question with our faith. What difference does it make? Our belief in Jesus, our, our belief that he was the Son of God, rode into Jerusalem proclaiming to everybody that he brought the message from God. What difference does that make? How will that change our lives? That is a message that needs to change the way we live, what's important for us, how we live and, and deal with one another. The triumphal entry is not just about Hosanna. Hosanna means save us, save us. It's not just about being saved. It's about living, living for God. This is what Jesus wanted. He wanted us to know and to understand what it meant to live for God. Now, in his life, the people were supportive of him when he went into town. And yet, later in the week, when it came time to release one of the prisoners, Pilate said, well, who do you want? Do you want Jesus? And they said, no, no, because he wasn't what they wanted. They wanted a king. They wanted a military leader. They wanted somebody to, to win the battle for them. And that wasn't Jesus. What do we want of Jesus today? Do we want him to ride into Jerusalem and, and to give us that feeling of power? And then where are we? Where are we? It's not just about what God has done through Jesus. It's about how we hear the message. It's about how we live the message. There is a power in this life, in this world, that is greater than us. A power that has created all of this. And that power, that God, speaks to us. Gives us direction. And has given us direction through Jesus. Is alive and gives us direction today. Know and believe that the power that is greater than us, the power of God, wants us to live in his way, to follow his teachings, not just to wave palm branches and, and say, yeah, yeah, good, we're on your side, but to live it. And then the question is, what difference does that make? What makes all the difference in the world? To live a life of love and care is revealed through Jesus, gives us abundance. It gives us meaning and purpose. It doesn't clear away all the problems, but it gives us power to live. What if this were true, that God really cares about us, really loves us, is alive today? What difference does that make in how you live? It should make all the difference in the world to live a righteous and good life is fulfilling and meaningful. To love one another and to lift one another and to care for one another is a plan that works for everyone and works for God. We sing Hosanna, save us. But we need to live, thank you, Lord. Help us to follow. Help us to follow. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, help us that you may make a difference in our lives this day, every day. Amen.